Yo, what's up everybody, it's your man Tim Swain and today I am answering some of your questions. So listen, I am taking some of your questions from social media and I know you guys ask me a lot of questions. I don't have the opportunity to get back to all of them, but today I decided to take some time to get back to them and answer your question. So we're gonna jump straight into it. Let me start with, I believe these questions are coming from TikTok. First question is coming from the, well underscore the Moors. Can you help other family provide info to family looking to do the same? I believe you're referring to, can I help other families relocate to Ghana? Yes, I can. You can go straight to my website. I offer consultation. I offer, also wrote this amazing book that details the steps if you're visiting Ghana for the first time or if you're looking to move here. So yes, information is always on the website and on this video. Second question comes from EJ Wall. What's your advice or suggestion when taking this leap? Three simple things. Number one, write down why you want to take this leap. I assume moving to Ghana or moving out of the country. Number two, create a game plan. And then number three, connect with somebody that has already done it so you can learn from them. Next question is from Kimberly Sanders 412. Kimberly says, but let me ask, are you discriminated due to being an African-American? Is the is the crab in the bucket syndrome worse there? We have, uh, we have been our own worst enemy. So I think you asked, yes, I get your question. The answer is no. I tell people this all the time. In Ghana, will you fit in, quote unquote, as an African-American? No, but you will always be accepted. And the difference is you're coming from a different culture, different background. You are a foreigner in a different land, but that's not gonna stop you from accessing any opportunities that exist, at least in Ghana. So absolutely not that crab in the bucket mentality. Sometimes I think it's a myth. Um, I do know people are people everywhere you go, all right? Next question, Mimi. Mimi asked, the, the money isn't digital. Do you need a chip in hand? Hey, what is this? I saw many Africans in line for their eyes to be scanned. I have no idea what that means. So let me go to the next question. <laughs> All right, so I'm going right to the next question. I am Knife Edge ask, can you please make a video about work and jobs and how to make money in Ghana? Listen, my whole channel is about entrepreneurship and the different experiences of people in Ghana. So if you want to know how to make money in Ghana, I think it's two things. Number one, don't come looking for a job in Ghana. Number two, Think about entrepreneurship, depending on where you are, how can you leverage the opportunities? If you're coming from a country that has a stronger currency, right, how can you do that? Because the truth is, depending on where you're coming from, the economy situation may not be as great in Ghana for you. Um, but again, I would say this, don't come to Ghana looking for a job. Number two, think about entrepreneurship, watch some other videos on my channel. All right, so the next question is from C, C B Boss. So CB Boss asks, what type of jobs are available for Americans? Well, most of the Americans that I know that come to Ghana, they either work for themselves as entrepreneurs, uh, they work for an international company, or they, are, they have enough savings to kind of, you know, get them through until they figure out what the next step is gonna be. Next question. Legionary Gears says, hey man, I got a question. How is the neighborhood in Ghana. Electricity bills, electricity is 24 seven, are houses affordable? I got a buddy of mine. All right, uh, maybe that question was cut off. Uh, the neighborhoods in Ghana, you have to come and see it. Here's what I want you to do. Just check out some of my other real estate videos. It shows you the different kinds of housing options available, everything from luxury to just a normal neighborhood. I gave you a tour of my neighborhood when I used to live in a, a very um, just kind of average neighborhood. So you can definitely check that out. You pay electricity just like every other place. Is electricity 24 seven? It could be, but not always. You can get electricity 24 seven, um, but we do have problems with uh, blackouts. So that's something, and I do a video all about why you need to go off grid, but great questions, great questions. It's getting hot. All right, the next question comes from, uh, is it Domini? Domini or Domini. What was your process before you moved to Ghana? Uh, one of my last videos talked about that. I told you about the whole process. Basically, I really believe I was supposed to move to Ghana, so this is what I did. I planned, I planned, I planned, and when I finished planning, it took me about two years. I took the leap of faith, and then we moved. That was four years ago, and we haven't looked back since. Kurt said, 
I'm just curious, how much volunteer and community work did you work you did in Ghana beyond relationships in Ghana? Um, okay, I believe you're asking about my volunteerism. So I have a nonprofit organization where we do a lot of work in the central region of Ghana. The central region of Ghana is where you find the places like uh, Cape Coast. A lot of people go to Elmina Castle, Cape Coast Castle. That's all in the central region. I do a lot of work with my nonprofit in that central region. So hopefully that answers your question. Are you able to learn the language? Ah, kakra kakra. I'm learning small, small. Every day I'm learning small, small. Tamika Williams says, I've seen the same issues in a lot of the comments about load shedding. I believe you're coming from maybe South Africa or something because those are the folks who use that terminology. What can we do to help with the infrastructure problems? Well, you can buy a generator, you can go off grid, or you can get some type of backup battery. That's pretty much what you can do for now. Another, all right, another question comes from, uh, here we go. Yeah. Orchid love Jesus more than life. All right, Orchid love Jesus more than life. Where is the best place to live in Ghana? I like the ocean. How about the school system? Really, I don't think there's a best place to live. Everything depends on your preference. I know people that live in cantonments, uh, or like um, airport, which is kind of like the, I've heard someone describe it as like the Hollywood of, of Ghana. I know people who live way like outside of Ghana in a very small rural community. They built something, they live kind of like off grid and they love it. So everything depends on your lifestyle. Um, how about the school system? The school, it depends on what level you're talking about. We have great uh, schools. Most of them are gonna be, I don't say most, but a lot of them are private when it comes to like kids from like young age all the way up to senior high school so it just depends man it really just depends so i would say um, i did a whole video about uh kid raising kids in ghana so check that whole series out and i'm talking about schools how to choose schools things to do with kids in ghana and all of that all right j-rod asked what about crime the beautiful thing is when i came to ghana it was nothing like the u.s where we have a culture where it can be violent right i was having a conversation with someone just to give you an example if i'm driving in my car in the u.s and someone gets it and i get into a, a, a alter, altercation with someone let's say rose rage i'm in fear that that person may pull out a gun they may ram me with a car they may do something crazy like that when i'm in ghana if something like that happens the person may shout at me the person may curse me but after that it is finished so Incidences of like violent crime, things happen everywhere in the world, but it's nowhere on the level. In Ghana, most people are at peace. We're at peace. Dooley asks, Africa is big, why Ghana? It's a simple answer. Because Ghana was the first place I visited, fell in love with it, I found purpose here. But I definitely see myself having different places to live in the continent, because there's a lot of countries that are very, very beautiful here. Silk. Ease smooth hair co. Do they have solar power? Yes, some people do. They purchase it. Um, it's not subsidized like on a large level by the government, but a lot of people have solar power. The Shopify lady says, Can you order from Amazon? Yes, you can. <laughs> but it ain't the Amazon you're expecting. You can order from Amazon. You will pay like, I think it's like duty fees for it. For example, I was going to order something that costs a thing like 40 bucks. Once they added all the fees for like being cross country duty fees, it ended up being like 200 bucks. But we do have other things like Jumia. That's right. So we have Jumia and we have some other things. And also people just bring stuff back and forth. So that's what I would recommend you do. Last question here that we got from Q. Q asks, does Ghana take a American degrees? I'm assuming you're asking, is it favorable to have an American degree in Ghana? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you're from America, what a lot of Americans don't realize is it's like a powerhouse, man. America is one of the most powerful nations in the world. So if you come with an American degree, people look at you in a certain way. However, however, again, I tell people, don't come to Ghana looking for a job unless you're working with an international company or something like that. Well, listen, folks, that's all the time that I have to answer some of your questions. Please, if there's other questions, I don't care how big, how small, how invasive you think they are, ask me. It doesn't mean I'm going to answer, but you can ask me and I will do my best to answer them. I appreciate you so much for tuning in. I appreciate the engagement on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, and IG and all the other platforms. Again, if you love this content, make sure you like this video, make sure you subscribe. Till next time, peace.